Welcome back. Hometown's my favorite episode. We have bracelets and apples and paddle boards and proms. So much fun and emotion too. Welcome to episode seven of Michelle Young's Journey to Find Love. The night starts off with a heart to heart between Michelle and Tasha. Unpopular opinion, but the conversation between Tasha and Michelle, I don't agree with. Let me explain. While Tasha suggests to Michelle that it's a good question to ask a family if the son is ready, I beg to differ. The problem is that not all families are the same nor are all parents good gauges of their children's readiness. Now sure, if you're in a close-knit family and you process emotions, then maybe yes. But in many fractured families, some of which we saw tonight, do you want to give an ex-stepdad the fate of your relationship based upon their opinion? Let me ask you this question. Would you want your parents on national television to weigh in on whether you were ready or not? But let's start with the positives first, and that's Brandon's hometown. We could all feel bad for Brandon during the skateboard portion. Skateboarding by myself, like, no problem. No one to look at. Michelle hops in the room, my legs were like, yo, I don't know how to work anymore. And so, couldn't even make it up a ramp, couldn't even get down three stairs. Don't know what I'm doing. And it's just like, yo, I'm embarrassing the out of myself. But you look good, girl. Like, you keep doing you. Like, you look good. And I think something fascinating here is happening. We call it in psychology the Hawthorne effect. What is that? It refers to the fact that when you're being watched, you tend to make more mistakes. A gentleman by the name of Hawthorne had a plant in Chicago and he noticed when people felt that they were being watched, they made more mistakes. And I think that's what happened to Brandon here. Because why else would Brandon choose skateboarding if he wasn't good at it? But you get the sense he gets in his head and can't recover. What is nice though is as a couple, Michelle and Brandon recover together. We see them skateboarding together, and that's the best part about the date. Now, when we get to the parents' visit, no one called out the bracelet, but I saw that Michelle was wearing it. Uh, but yeah, I quickly found out that that was not the case, so. <laughs> I'm just so excited to introduce her to you guys, and this woman has literally made me smile every single day since I've been here. That's awesome. And what's clear is that Brandon's family is very welcoming to Michelle. Can we talk about Brandon's brother for a minute? Noah is adorable, and not only did he delay the Navy, he was clearly a huge supporter of his brother. He definitely has a big heart and is very sensitive, and, you know, he hasn't had the best past relationship, so, you know, I'm just trying to make sure that, you know, this is something that's going to be good for him. What I loved about Brandon and his mother is the respect that he has for her. And he speaks about Michelle the same way, that both of them hold themselves with confidence. The way that she holds herself, her strength, like she's one of the strongest women I've ever met, aside from you. And then when Brandon's mother speaks herself, she doesn't have to warn her son about what might happen. But the conversation between Michelle and Brandon's father, now that was sweet. Because Michelle emphasized a number of times that the two families would blend so well together. We can see the wheels happening and Michelle tells Brandon that she is falling for him too. I get the sense that he's just very familiar to her. But what's clear about Michelle and Brandon is that she doesn't have to guess how he's feeling. He's straight forward and she adores that about him. Now the second hometown is with Rodney. Michelle does the running jumping thing and we catch them in the apple grove. It's sweet when Rodney puts Michelle on his shoulders and she picks the first kiss apple. The bike riding together feels like two friends who have known each other forever. But when we get to the hometown part, Rodney impresses me even more. He says, that he knows that it's real, the feelings he has. He also refers to his mother as his best friend, and you can see this really sweet connection. 
And even though his mother is cautious, as all mothers would be, he tells his mother, Michelle's worth the risk. I just, I look at Michelle and I think she's worth the risk. Mm -hmm. The qualities I look for, which you already know, you're fully aware. It's at this moment that his mother, Carrie, tears up because she knows that her son is smitten, but she also knows that he can be hurt too. And we see where Ronnie gets his warmth from, from his sweet, outspoken mother. The third hometown is one of the best orchestrated because Joe has the hometown advantage, right? Michelle and Joe greet each other, but for some reason, there's always a little bit of hesitancy. Watch their body language when you see them upon greeting each other. It feels like both of them are waiting for each other to initiate. And Michelle doesn't jump into Joe's arms the way she does with the other men. But because Michelle brought Joe to her high school, he reciprocates and brings Michelle to his high school. But did you notice those tiny little lockers? They look like dollhouse lockers. Algebra, um, biology, and everything was on this. And Joe shows Michelle his special corner where he lives out his high school fantasy. Their prom date, though, was actually also the, the highlight of the night because Joe or the producers listened to Michelle when she read her poem that she never went to prom. And so this provides an opportunity for Joe to really show that he's paying attention. And the details matter to Michelle. She says that multiple times about how special it was that he did that for her. Having said that, Joe's not the best of dancers as we see a couple of awkward moments. But the photo shoot was adorable and you can just see how much they enjoy each other's company. Now, when we get to Joe's parent visit, we see that Michelle's gonna meet more than just his parents, but his brother and his sister-in-law, Hannah. We already know Hannah's name, so we know that we're gonna hear some more from Hannah. But what becomes quickly obvious is Joe learned how to be reserved and shy, and he gets that from both his parents, especially his father, pretty shut down. Even after there's this obvious opening talking about opening up and tearing and crying that we see Joe's dad saying, Do you got anything else? I know you got some questions. But I thought what was interesting about the family is really the position that Hannah took. So Hannah becomes the family spokesperson and says, I love that she lives close to us. That's convenient. That is nice. I hope this works out because we will see her in the grocery store. Yeah. And what I also found most provocative was when Hannah asked Michelle, how are you making these decisions? I thought, good question, but what is the response? Emotional, uh, rationally, I'd wonder what the possible answers could have been. Now, finally, this takes us to the last hometown with Nate or Nathaniel. And they do some paddle boarding. Thank goodness Michelle doesn't end up in the lake. But it has been undeniable, the chemistry between Nate, again, Nathaniel, and Michelle. Yes! Yes, it is. The way that Michelle smirks when she looks at Nate. So you're right over heels, huh? And the whispering words that they both are sharing with each other, it gets us to want to like climb into the TV and hear more. But Nate feels pretty confident up until this portion where suddenly meeting the parents becomes very real. So his mother, who's also a high school teacher, brings Michelle candy. I think this is the first time we've ever seen someone bring um, the lead a gift. And the candy, even sweeter, was from Canada, where they were born, where Nate was born and raised. But what's interesting, as I've said, up until this point, I really thought Nate was quite expressive, always telling Michelle how he feels about her, how nice she looks. And now we find out that Nate's not expressive at all in his family. What actually bothers me is then Charles, his stepfather, 
says he doesn't know the difference between being in love and being married. And then when talking personally with Michelle, he says, I don't want Nate to emotionally hurt you. But if this is all new to Nate because he hasn't had relationships before, how would he know whether it's real or not? Huh? And here is when we see Nate talking to his stepdad. We see how anxious he is. You can notice it because if you watch Nate's body language, his foot is twitching. I have been so fortunate to have you. This is similar to the twitching that we've seen with Nate in other circumstances where you see him twitching his wine glass. So he's acting out these feelings that he has, and I'm guessing they're feelings of ambivalence. But now back to the relationship. The story isn't really about Nate and Michelle as much as the storyline between Nate and his stepfather. And unlike the conversation we saw with Matt James and his dad, this one felt more healing, like something was being repaired. And it impressed me that Nate was the one who stuck with it. He choked up when he was telling his dad that I wouldn't be who I am without you. You can see him holding back tears. And my guess is there's so much more to the story here. I want to know about Nate, about his biological father, about this stepfather. I want to understand all of that. Of course, I'm a therapist. But what I did love is that there was something happening here. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy that we never talk about stuff like this. I don't, I don't know if I knew I ever told you I love you before. <laughs> and this was a powerful dynamic. What did you think? What I also loved is that Michelle brought it full circle that it was her that was in many ways orchestrating Nate being able to repair this with her father. Loved that. Now, after the hometown, Serena and Bree pay a visit. And God, I'm not sure. I hope they didn't have to quarantine for two weeks because they show us so little. But you do get the sense that Serena and Bree both have the ultimate confidence in Michelle, our queen, for knowing who she wants. And you can see no matter what, She's not leaving, she's sticking with it to the end. But can we get to Michelle's final rose dress? Wow, another stunner. The men are standing there anxious as you can imagine. And unfortunately, Rodney, Mr. Granny Smith was sent home. I do have to say what a class act Rodney was though. Even in the limo, Rodney talks about how special it was meeting Michelle, how he'll never forget it. Like I can never ever forget the moments we've shared here, ever. He doesn't think about himself and how he's feeling, or he doesn't focus on what he's lost, but rather what he's gained. And I want to say that I hope Ronnie will just get a little bit more confidence because I feel like with all the love that he's getting, he's sure to blossom after the show. So what can we learn from this analysis of the hometown episodes? Well, we learned that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And that so often, if you're trying to understand someone in your relationship with them, find out more about the family. It's not really about the ex, it's about the family. We can understand so much of the patterns if we look from where the person came from. But you can tell a lot about families based upon how their siblings talk about you, the way that Noah spoke about Brandon. And if you're in the situation where you're meeting someone's family, watch the questions that you ask as well. Remember that the family is not just picking up on the person, they're picking up on your energy too. And if you want your family to like your partner, make statements, not always asking questions. Talk about how great they treat you, how wonderful you feel around them. This is different than saying, what do you think? because of course your family is gonna to want to protect you. Now, I started off this episode saying, be careful about the question if the person's ready. So what might be a better question to get to know someone? Here it is. Are you ready? Ask your family, because we call this vetting a partner, asking your friends and family what they think of you, how do you see us as a team? Because that answer is going to be more telling. 
It's less about, oh, he's so cute, she's so pretty. It's more about, do we compliment each other? Because sometimes people can pick up on unconscious dynamics. And you're looking for someone who's going to compliment you well. You're going to be a team together because that's what's going to be stable over time. So that's my psychological lesson to you for hometown lessons. If you want to know if a partner is right for you, ask your friends and family, how do you think we are together as a team? Catch you next week when we're down to the final three.